So here are my new uh, wheel spacers for my right side of the tractor. So here I'm working on building the adapter plate for the case hydraulic pump onto the Honda 24 horsepower. I drew up these plans in Fusion 360, which I printed out, which gave me my uh, exact locations of the uh, bolt holes. And here I went down to my sheet metal shop and I had to punch out my uh, adapter plates rather than trying to drill them. It works out a lot better. It just pops holes right in the stuff with this massive press. Here you can see that the uh, holes lined up with my original CAD drawing. And here's where I'm starting to join the two plates together. The, um, I have some Allen bolts that I uh, ground down to fit into the re recesses on the uh, bigger plate. And then I welded those in place and welded the center. And then welded the outside edge and used it on the TIG welder. And you can see where the uh, hydraulic pump sits on that center ring. So continuing work on the uh, adapter plate for the hydraulic pump. So it fits on perfectly. I do need to get some Allen bolts for this for clearance on the heads. Everything else lines up good. So I'm just going to trim off the edges and stuff and make it look a little neater. So I've got it trimmed out a little bit. Makes it look nicer. I'm gonna have to clean up my plate a little bit down here, even with the Allen bolts. And up top, probably have to do the same. But now, as soon as I get my uh, coupler, I'll have hydraulic power. One more thing off the list. So I've now got the adapter plate done. I just need to. You can see in there, the center needs to, uh, camera now, I'm doing this side. I need to add a couple washers on the back side. I'll tack those in place because the center is raised up compared to the mounting bolts there. But that's all uh, done and ready. As soon as I put the coupler in there, and that would be transmitting hydraulic power. Next thing to work on mounting the engine. I uh, used Fusion 360, laid out the corner bolt for the engine, and now I'm going to uh, I'll put a piece of tape over this and hold it in place as a move, and then drill those, uh, pinprick those, and drill the holes and put the bolts in for the motor mount. So I've got my holes drilled. I got my bolts in place. So hopefully it'll slide right together. So the motor bolt slid right in place. And I'm waiting on some rubber bushings. That's gonna give me just a little bit more clearance on the back of the motor. It's sitting on top of the transmission cover right now. But uh, yeah, the rubber bushings are supposed to show up today and they're late. But I'll put the rubber bushings in. And then the, uh, the motor will be in place. I may add like a piece of quarter inch steel on top of the frame. Uh, when I was taking apart the old tractor, they had underneath, they had uh, um, an extra piece of steel on the frame. So I've just sticking it, so maybe I might need some extra steel. So I might just put it on top. It'll give me just that little bit extra clearance. That'll help me out. But yeah, the engine in place. 
Now I'm gonna work on the console. Had a new piece of steel bent up. That's gonna go on the bottom of the console. I'll weld that in. Weld the console to the thing. And then uh, I may see about strapping the batteries and put the battery in place and let's give it a fire. I don't have a muffler on it yet. I still gotta work on that. It's a little trouble because it's one inch tubing and I can't find any one inch tubing. I may end up just having to order some one inch specialty tubing from McMaster or something rather than an exhaust tube. And then uh, bend it. I did move the oil cool over, so I'm looking to run an adapter, a little extension. Maybe from up here to get this mounted exactly. Because it was hitting the fender here. So I'll make a little bracket for that. But it's actually perfect, it's out in the airflow right there. So, yeah, the muffler will be good. But it's getting close. Let's see if it'll start up. And it runs. Not that big a surprise, it was running before. I just wanted to get it running again. So I just got that bracket made for oil cooler. Uh, I just make the exhaust, you heard it's pretty loud. And I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do with the battery. I almost think the battery would be better sitting down here. I can put the gas tank up on top here. Now I can make a fuel cell similar to what I had there. This is just a Temporary gas tank, I can bolt it on the side. Just a multi, the fuel shell I made just for doing stuff like this. I have different mounting positions and whatever. But I think I'd, if I put the battery down below, I can make a nice gas tank up top here. And then have all the, uh, plenty of room for the hydraulics to go down through to the rear of the tractor. And, yeah, we got the, um, I think it's really starting to look like a tractor. Oh, I got these, uh, I got the wheel spacers in, the official wheel spacers now. So, rather than have some other temporary ones on there before. Like I said, I got a pretty decent amount of room in between the, the tire and the wheel here for my feet. Good. So I'm getting ready to mount the motor into place. I got the new uh, riser slash reinforcement plates welded on. I got some rubber uh, bushings to isolate the motor a little bit. And not that I'm using it now, but I got the Lovejoy to go on the engine. Uh, I don't want to put that in yet because don't have any hydraulic fluid in the system. But yeah, I'm gonna bolt it in place and get it, in, get it done. So I think I made some decent progress this week. Uh, so we got the, the new wheel spacers on. I've got the motor mounted in place. I've got the adapter plate made for the hydraulic pump. I've got the uh, radio support mounted. Put a new cross member in front. And I also put these uh, uh, receiver uh, two fry bolts in the front so I can use it to pull or whatever, but I, if I need, if the, if the Hydraulics are in the way there, I could take them out of the way easy enough. And then this is 
Quinn Stanley 4 inches, which is what a 2,500 pound winch needs for a mounting plate. I made the uh, adapter for the rotating oil cooler. So now I need to work on the exhaust. I'm gonna send the exhaust here or something. So I need to get a, a U and got to get some metal uh, tubing for that. Got to work on wiring the switch. Just need a few more inches to get mounted up into the dashboard. Uh, obviously the the hydraulics need to get figured out. Just gonna mount a cylinder on the side here for the front hydraulics. The I do have the uh, valve for the factory case uh, hydraulic, but um, I could do like a selector for use the same lever to do the to control the multiple lifts, but it also might be nice to have a, a multi-spool valve so I could control multiple hydraulics at once. Plus I'll need to have like a, I do like to want to put a um, PTO on the back. So to have a PTO plus a lift. So I definitely need multiple, I don't want to be hitting a switch to run the PTO and turn that on and off in the switch. I do need to get, mount the, Steering valve in there. And obviously coming off the steering call the steering shaft coming down in. And that's gonna take up a little bit of room right here. I'm gonna have to get the forward reverse control lever in place. But then that's gonna and that's gonna uh, I think the easiest way to connect that up to the um, to the uh, Steering or the control valve is going to be like a push pull cable rather than trying to do some sort of linkage. I do think I still want to put the battery down on the side. It makes it complicated if I ever want to change it out or whatever, but it does give me more room up top. But I think the, I think the gas tank is going to have to go in the back. The, I do have an air filter. I made this 3D printed adapter. I didn't have enough meat on it. It cracks. I need to adjust the design on that. And then find the air filter that I put someplace special. So now I can't find it again. Trim down. This is a factory uh, gas tank. Trim this out of here. Um... Figure out the hydraulic lines, how they're all gonna go down through. I gotta get a do the brake pedal. Do the I think I'm gonna move this when I get the other pedals on here. And then do a link up to the front and then do something to Actually, with the rear brake as well. The obviously this this is a when you press the brake, it automatically centers the centers the uh, forward reverse. So if I incorporate that into the design or not, still lots to go, but definitely getting closer. But it's kind of cool. They can turn a key and it starts now. So I just need to start working on getting the uh, hydraulics in place and the thing can start potentially moving on its own power. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe.